Welcome to our traditional beach note, the third beach note. Right. For the Samus conference, please, please no tape here, yeah, not me. Right. You don't want to stand because the te the lecture is boring and it's, you may you, fall asleep. It's, and, that's you know, right. it's dangerous if you fall asleep. You fall and hurt up, yourself. You know? All right. Right. right, right. Okay, but so look, it is our honor that Yale consider to give the no the beach note for the third year in the row, and uh, this is something that we can do in honor of our late friends, Stamatis Vasiliadis, and I know that Yale can say. Many more good things about Samatis than me. So, yell, yeah, please. So, well, it, this is very difficult because one has to come up with a topic that's interested, interesting to everybody. And there are some people here that the closest to a computer they come to is when they push the button on their uh, 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 microwave oven. They can have the computer control it. The last two years, I had topics that were perhaps interesting had to do with education and research, the fact that our conferences and journals are broken. And that's something everybody can relate to. This year I could not, so uh, we talked, what should we do? The decision was that maybe instead of talking for an hour, I'll talk for 10 minutes. But it's important to continue the tradition that Stomatis always wanted, which was to have a keynote on the beach, or what they have lovingly called the Beach Note thing. So this is the third annual Beach Note in honor of Stomatis. I refuse to say in memory of Stomatis because as far as I'm concerned, as long as this conference exists, Stomatis will always be a part of it. So I don't see as in memory of Stomatis, in honor of Stomatis. Now, Captain Giannis' wife says, for me to talk for 10 minutes is impossible. She says, she says she'll see, she'll believe it when she sees it. That's 10 minutes is what we said. The other problem is that if history repeats itself, it won't be 10 minutes of me. It'll be 10 minutes of me and Captain Giannis because he always interrupts. Nonetheless, so what should I talk about? So I thought that... Given the uh, panel that we're having, and given the fact that everybody knows that today, with all these transistors, we have multi-core. So because we have multi-core, what has happened is all these gurus who should know better have come up with what I have come to call mega nonsense. So what I thought I would do would be to just mention briefly in the eight minutes left to me, some of these <laughs> items of mega nonsense that are promulgated by people who should know better. So the first one is, uh, one of the gurus says, hardware operates sequentially. This is in the context of parallel programming. He says, you know, the programming may be parallel, but the hardware operates sequentially. Nonsense. Hardware is absolutely in parallel. In fact, when we design hardware with a uh, hardware description language, we assume parallel. In fact, if you want to do something sequential, you have to say, Bloop, and then, boom, and that separates this parallel from the next parallel. I don't understand how a guru of computer architecture can possibly say hardware runs sequential. It's sort of like, you know, you have all these electrons that are running around on the chip, and one electron says, after you, Mr. Electron. <laughs> and the other electron says, no, 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 you're the older electron. You go first, and I'll go next. No. All the electrons are working all the time. So, hardware in parallel. Software we want to make go parallel. For some reason, people think it's harder for the software to go parallel. But there's no question that the hardware goes parallel. Next item of nonsense. We get these people to say, you know, we're doubling Moore's Law. You all know Moore's Law. What's Moore's Law? 
Anybody? Nobody knows the Lord's law. Ah, uh, who says I think? Did I hear Sally's voice? <laughs> Sally, what's Moore's law? How, how, what's yeah, the end? Every how much? How much? Every how long? Year and a half. Huh? Isn't it year and a half? So you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I like it when people think they know something. Gordon Moore never said every 18 months. Never. Well, he showed the plot. I'm sorry? He showed the plot. I can't get you. He said what? He showed the graph. That's right. And it and was. From that, it, people have taken a lot of things. No, 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 no. So now I'll teach you, okay? <laughs> That's why God gave you two ears and one mouth, see? <laughs> what Gordon Moore did in 1965 is he plotted the growth number of transistors over the next 10-year period, semi-log paper, the y-axis was log, the x-axis was the regular, straight line. Straight line on semi-log is a, an exponential doubling every year. In 1975, he redid the experiment every two years. Now, you know, Gordon was an American, we're Americans. One year, two years, it's too big a story. Americans have to do it quick. So one year plus two years equals three years divided by two is 18 months. And that's why people think 18 months. It's not 18 months. It's Now it's in fact, it's not even every two years. The, the, the period is even longer. But you get these yo-yos that say that Moore's Law says we're doubling the number of cores on the chip. You know, it's like these, no, no, no interconnect, you know, we're going to do by metal telepathy, see? And if you look at the number of transistors in each core, you'd swear it was a Intel 4004. <laughs> so people say with all this technology, we can have millions of Mickey Mouse cores on the chip. It's like, you know, some of you are farmers and you don't have to pull the plow. Would you rather have an ox? Or, or would you have, uh, you know, a million chickens to build ah, yeah, 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 up yeah, yeah. Wow, right. Oh, so the okay. truth of the matter... Give the reference, please. Give the reference, please. The ref I don't know the reference. It's Simon a Bulgarian Craig. paper? What? Simon Craig. Simon... No, Simon. 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 Of course. Was Seymour Cray? Of course. Ah, Seymour Cray. What did he do? He said this thing about the chickens and all. So he made, you know, he designed the Cray 2. Yeah. You ever seen a Cray 2? <laughs> what is the top of the Cray 2? Made out of what? Leather. Huh? No, no, top of the Cray 2 made out of what? Leather. I don't know. Glass. You didn't know that? The top. The top of the Cray 2 made out of glass. Ah, okay. Good. You know why? So when you look down through the glass, you can see more Cray. <laughs> I gotta teach. I gotta teach you yeah, everything, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Okay. How are we doing on time, boss? One minute. <laughs> huh? You looking for trouble? I'm looking for trouble. So this is Captain Giannis. Captain Giannis never went to school, but he speaks seven languages. Wow. I was in never school. I went to school, I speak one language. It's <laughs> all <laughs> so a problem. No? You, you know a lot of other things, eh? <laughs> anyway, ah, you, you, you are allowed to speak six minutes more. Six minutes more. <laughs> so people say parallel pro the gurus again, you know. Uh, no, before I even do that, why do we have a multi core chip? So people say for performance, see, because we can have all those cores, all those cores uh, running. It's not why we have a multi-core chip. The reason we have a multi-core chip is because this doubling the transistors. And by the way, the 3D is actually supports Moore's law because what the 3D allows you to do is have a larger chip area. Multiple of these layers gives you a bigger area. So you get more transistors, you got bigger area, you know the process technology, fewer defects in the silicon, allows the chip area to be bigger, the, tech, the, uh, the uh, lithography gets better, we can make the transistors be smaller, smaller transistors, bigger area, double the number of transistors. What are we going to do with it? We could do 
a better branch predictor, better out of order execution, a trace cache, simultaneous multi thread. You can do all these good things to improve the microarchitecture. It's not cheap, it requires design time. Much easier over time to just double the size of the cache. You finally get a chip that has a processor this big and a cache this big. It gets so silly that you say, can't continue to do that. So we say, what are we going to do? So they put two processors on the, on the chip, then four processors, then eight processors. So the reason for the multi-core is not for a performance problem. It's because it's the easy thing to do. The good news is the next time maybe we can do it right which in fact is what the panel is all about that we've been doing the end of each day to do it right to figure out what goes on the chip parallel programming is hard they say why is parallel programming hard they say because parallel thinking is hard parallel thinking is hard thinking is hard maybe ah. <laughs> yeah. for many people that's good. That's good. That's good. Welcome to the talk by uh, Yale, Captain Giannis, and Sally. <laughs> That's right. Thinking is hard. By the way, I was going to say this example for tomorrow's panel, but I think I'll do it now with respect to thinking in parallel is hard. I teach the freshman course at the University of Texas. I used to teach the freshman course at Michigan, which is how I got owner Mutlu to be my student at Texas. In fact, for senior faculty here, and there are a few, trust me, you should teach the freshman course. Let the assistant professors teach the graduate courses. You who have experience and can see the better perspective, you teach the freshman course. And in fact, if you get a good student in the freshman year, he'll be with you forever. In fact, more, uh, owner. Owner is now an assistant professor at CMU. He's burning up the industry. I had him at the freshman course at Michigan. When he applied to graduate school, he applied to MIT, Carnegie Mellon, and Texas. Where did he end up coming? Texas. Why? Because I had him in the freshman course. So in the freshman course is where you can, you have a blank sheet of paper, you have your perspective, senior faculty teach freshman courses. This past year in the freshman course, I said to the students, they're Texas freshmen, and I said to them, Factorial. You all know factorial? How do you multiply, how do you compute 10 factorial? What's important is the multiply operation. How long is it going to take to do multiply 10 factorial? Can you come up with an algorithm to compute 10 factorial? Time out! No, no, I need one more minute. This is the most difficult part of the talk. You know? <laughs> so these are Texas freshmen, and they know how to do factorial. And so what's the answer to compute 10 factorial with an algorithm? If the only thing I care about is multiply time. So factorial, 10 factorial. 10 times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6 times five, times four, times three, times two. You don't need to multiply by one because that you doesn't contribute do. anything to the eight multiply times. Bing. Now I say to the freshman, and I don't tell them it's hard. In fact, that's one of the problems with this parallel thinking is hard. If we don't tell them it's hard, maybe it won't be hard. And I say, okay, how about if you have two processors and you can send a message from one to the other at no cost? Now how many multiply times does it take to do 10 factorial? <laughs> when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. And within two minutes, and they never think to parallel thinking, but within two minutes, Freshman, let's see, if I've got another processor, what I can do is I can say other processor, compute five factorial. 
And while that's going on, <laughs> there's only one female I allowed to do that. <laughs> And I'm not going to embarrass her by telling you who. Okay? While that process is doing five factorial, what I do is 10 times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6. At that point, this processor has computed five factorial times five factorial. I've just reduced from eight multiplied times to five multiplied times. What's relevant is freshmen who never thought parallel before can come up with a parallel algorithm. If we don't tell them it's hard, maybe we have a, a chance. Parallel thinking is hard? Maybe. Captain Giannis wants to take over. I've got about a half a dozen others. Maybe I'll save them for uh, the panel. But in honor of Stamatis, we're now done. Who's taller, him or me? We are both dependent. Right. Anyway, I, I, I like to say two words. Uh, I'm appreciating because every now and then he reminds Stamati. And this it makes me very happy. Because Stamati, he is around here and listen to him and to us. And I am, of course, honored to be compared to Stamatis. <laughs> Thank you very much.